Exactly. We do have a mirror match here with Azumarill yeah. General Hatterene and DD, Marowak, Porygon, Rillaboom um, as the six for both players. So we this do. should be fun to see how the players maneuver around uh, Pokemon that I would presume to be EV the exact same way. Yeah, I think that's actually a pretty safe bet here. Uh, I don't want to be spoiling for anyone, but they both sent me the exact same uh, rental code when they sent me their six to make the overlay. Um, <laughs> So I, it'll be really interesting to see how two different players approach the exact same team. Uh, I'm not familiar with where this team came from. I don't know whether it was from Reddit or from somewhere else. I know that Rollercoaster has primarily been using another team in preparation for the Players' Cup, but um, these leads are interesting. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the leads so far? Um, I mean, I will always enjoy seeing the Azumarill lead because Azumarill can kind of manhandle Trick Room if you play it properly. Yeah. Um... Especially, I mean, in this case, I believe it is a Life Orb Azumarill, but especially if it is, has a, some sort of boost. So the Life Orb, is, in this case, is what's going to help. Um, because your Life Orb Max Geysers and Max Starfalls are just going to do so much damage to the opposing Pokemon. Yeah, and, and like given Azumarill's like, kind of middling speed stat at 50, it really can operate as in or out of Trick Room. When you really think about it, like a bulk of the Trick Room sweepers operate around 40. So you're not mm -hmm. terribly below, or you're not terribly like slower than them. And you can be in a decent position outside of Trick Room against most Trick Room teams. Yeah, especially as the format has kind of progressed away from things like Enkelder and Rhyperior and more towards like Tyranitar and Primarina, which are based like 60 and 61. Mm -hmm. The Azumarill can actually function super well uh, in Trick Room, the only thing it has to worry about, like being slower, is the super hard Trick Room modes of like Hatterene, or um, in this case Marowak. But yeah. even Marowak cannot do that much damage in return. Yeah. Uh, so on this turn one, we see both players switch into their Rillabooms. Interestingly, um, with uh, um, Rollercoaster switching in for uh, I, I'm sorry, I missed the. It was the. I believe it was DD. in DD. Yeah. Yes. That's correct. And then uh, we see uh, Rob. Uh, switch in that Marowak to avoid taking a Max Geyser. Um, a Rillaboom presumably takes that Max Geyser a little bit better. Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of speed ties this game. Yeah. Uh, I will say the Rillaboom did not take the Max Geyser that well. Yeah. It was better than um, better than the Marowak would have done, but <laughs> not that well. Yeah, I, I, I believe that the, the main reason for getting that Rillaboom in was to go for a Grassy Glide this turn. Um, mm -hmm. So that'll be really interesting to see, especially kind of given what we saw Roll Costa just opt into, um, how that's going to play out. Like, I, I expect a Grassy Glide and probably, um, I, I don't know, I, I missed the Porygon 2's moveset, but I'm expecting either an Ice Beam uh, into that Rillaboom slot that's now in DD or um, a Tri-Attack. Yeah, I, I would assume you get pretty much that exact sequence of turn. As we see the Dynamax oh. instead from the Rillaboom, which is also a safe play. Yeah, for um, sure. Especially if predicting the uh, potential switch back into the Indeedee to change the terrains. Yeah. Then you don't have to deal with the the, the non-priority Grassy Glided, and instead you have your 106 base, 60 base power uh, G-Max Drum Solo. Yeah, and I think it'll be, yeah, seeing the Max Steel Spike come out here, I think is a, is a really smart move uh, from Rollercoaster. It's not going to get the knockout. Um, but it is going to go ahead and boost that defense by one stage. I don't know how much one stage of defense is really going to do in the face of 160 base power uh, G-Max Drum Solo, though, so I, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, no, um, Yeah, go ahead. Oh, interestingly enough, based on that damage from the uh, Steel Spike, I believe a Starfall would have KO'd that Max uh, Rillaboom. Yeah. So it was an interesting play going for the Steel Spike, maybe getting a little bit greedy, hoping it didn't Dynamax at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe just like realizing the defense boost is also super helpful. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I think it might have been for that defense boost for the NDD kind of going forward. Kind of uh, presumably, Rollercoaster knows the the way the way the rest of this team wants to operate. Um, given that he has the exact same team, um, but mm -hmm. uh, we've seen three of four of Ian Shadow's team. Um, and we've seen three or four of Rollercoaster. So I, I'm really interested to see what the fourth is for both of them. Yeah, um, I would assume that the fourth is probably the Ndidi on Eon Shadow's team. Mm -hmm. um, just because you, you want the follow me support with the Marowak and the Rillaboom. Um, although Hatterene could make sense, but I, I would assume it doesn't make that much sense, especially without the Ndidi, because it can only be one of the two. 
but we see a geyser Oof. do 90 percent of that porygon that is a lot and i depending on speed tiers here i the porygon tube will get that recover off before ndd moves but i don't know the interplay between ndd and, and um Rillaboom. I know that Rillaboom is the exact same speed stat as in DD, so it all comes down to how they're trained, and it just oh. lives that expanding force. Wow. Yeah, a, a very risky play going for that expanding force, not picking up the KO instead of going for the follow me to protect his Umro. Um, yeah. But both players are pretty much out of their Dynamax at this point. True. True. And so. uh, now Rollercoaster has access to priority with that grassy glide he no longer has the double um target expanding force um but having access to this priority grassy glide is i think gonna be really important for the remainder of the game uh knowing that that last is marowak as long as the rain is up that's th that's kind of kind of lessen the amount of damage marowak can do into rillaboom so presumably rob is trying to stall out the rain yeah i would tend to agree with that sentiment um but picking off the Rillaboom here is probably very safe, um, but the the one issue with it is is that um, the once you if you pick off the Rillaboom, then the Marowak just comes in for free with a couple of turns of Trick Room left, and it kind of just KOs everything, even in the rain at this point. Like Flare Blitz is still going to do seventy five eighty percent to that Rillaboom, yeah, uh, outside of Dynamax. And and now especially that Rob switched in that DD to go ahead and uh, remove the Grassy Glide priority we see that uh uh roller coaster won the speed tie in that case um mm -hmm. because it they would be the exact same speed coming off the same team sheet um so yeah so well this is interesting here the ndidi is on the field on eon shadow's side um and then the porygon 2 also comes in so maybe like a follow me recover to get back up to full hp and then a trick room once the trick room runs out is pretty safe um, I'm not exactly sure otherwise what the best play would be here for Eon Shadow. Yeah, no, that's a good question. And it looks like Rolikos is going to go ahead and take a quick peek at the speed tiers. Um, I think that he's figured out that they're probably working off a very similar team sheet as well. I think they both know, uh, presumably, where they got it and what they're going to be going for. Um, yeah, going for the helping hand. Presumably an ice beam here into this real boom. Yeah, I wonder if that will actually get the... Uh, the KO here. Um, nope, not. It's still living with pretty much 25% of its HP left, so... Um, and probably Porygon getting taken out here from that combination of attacks. Yeah, uh, without the without the Eviolite, it's going to be way less bulky, um, but even with Eviolite, I'm not sure that it would have lived at, at that kind of meager 15%. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't think it would have either. Um, so it looks pretty dire for Eon Shadow at this point, although the Merrimack does have a positive matchup with everything remaining on Rollercoaster's side of the field. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I forgot to check exactly how many turns of Trick Room were left, I'm, I'm, but if we are out of Trick Room here, then I think that, um, you know, it, presumably he could, go, he could go for, say, a Follow Me um, and a Flare Blitz into that Rillaboom um, mm -hmm. and, and hope that it can tank two Expanding Forces. Um, but I, I guess we'll we'll see how the the end of this matchup plays out right here. Yeah, we see the expanding force come out, and this is going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, just just under fifty percent, but it's going to be mm. single target next turn with the uh, with a knockoff here. Yeah, and I I think this one is all but wrapped up at this point. True, true. Um, the my only question is is this the last turn of psychic trained? Is that base power going to be going down? Like I know it's going to be going from double to single, but if it's the last yeah. turn, the the power reduction goes down significantly. Yeah, so the power ends up, like, based on the math, it starts as an 80 base power move, um, and then goes to 120 base power, to then, with spread, 90 base power. Mm -hmm. But then, then you factor in the Psychic Train, putting it back up around 110 versus 80, so it is about a 30% decrease. But with the other Pokemon um, in Porygon, this should be pretty much over. Just because I'm not sure that the uh, the Marowak can do enough damage to each Pokemon without even KOing itself with Recoil. Yeah, at this point, the fact that it can't go for a Poltergeist into either of those two Pokemon, both of them being normal type, it's really going to hinder its damage output. So yeah, th I mean, this this one seems pretty wrapped up. What do you think the adjustments that uh, Eon Shadow can make for game two would be? 
Yeah, the uh, the adjustment's gonna be pretty tough. I, I think primarily based on the fact that they're running the exact same team. So I, I'm not sure that Marowak is gonna be the right bring to this. I think that you definitely want Azumarill. Um, and you're going to want some way of KOing that opposing Rillaboom. So as we do see Rollercoaster, go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, I also want to say uh, in chat, uh, that was that was a super fun game, uh, Woke Flossy. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm so sorry about the constant <laughs> yawn, snarl. Um, it was a brand new team I was trying, and that was functionally what the team report said to do. And I found it to be successful and very, very, very frustrating, and I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this adjustment in game two, I think it's going to continue to be a battle of terrains. I think maybe uh, Marowak's an interesting bring, but it just has such a negative matchup against that Azumarill yeah. that, uh, yeah, go ahead. I don't know. I think um, potentially bringing the Marowak and waiting to sort of stall out the Azumarill's uh, Dynamax mm -hmm. puts the Marowak in a super favorable position against pretty much everything else, um, especially with the, the ability to change terrains to get rid of Psychic Terrain or get rid of Grassy Terrain uh, if need be. Yeah. Uh, I think that's like a very interesting idea. I'm not sure how well it works in practice, especially with um, uh, the Azumarill being able to pretty much pick up two KOs at least in its three turns of Dynamax. Yeah. So I'm not sure how easy it is to stall at that point if you get the lead thrown. So I'm not sure if that's the right bring. Yeah, no, for sure. It's it's one of those things like where you're doing the mirror match, it's such a different amount of play. And like we were joking before how Austin has kind of become, uh, Rollercoast has kind of become this king of the mirror match because last week uh, him and Trey brought the exact same six. But there it was different items, different spreads, different sets. In this case, it is a literal mirror match. Um, so it's such a different way of playing. Yeah, I think the mirror match really comes down to getting the leads right and knowing how to play the team um, in a bunch of different ways versus one different way. Exactly. So whoever can succeed in finding like the different ways to play the team is going to be the one that will succeed in this matchup. Yeah, it's interesting to see that speed interaction as well with the real boom. Uh, we, we, we've seen that the real boom is outspeeding the NDD previously, but it's always fun to see the, the terrains override each other. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so given so, these leads, who do you give the advantage to? Um, I think the advantage is probably going to go towards um, Rollercoasta, especially because it, he has the Azumarill in. Uh, even though the Rillaboom can hit the Azumarill for super effective damage, he has the Azumarill in against uh, the Rillaboom without terrain up, so he can start chipping at the Rillaboom now Yeah, as and he, he does switch out the Azumarill. Yeah, which... Which I think is smart. Uh, I mean, he, he also could have gone for a redirection there um, and mm -hmm. still been able to eat, say, a G-Max drum solo into his NDD, but he also, yeah. I think, is valuing how important terrain is going to be. <laughs> um, it seems he did yeah, go ahead uh, and bait this early Dynamax from, from Eon Shadow. Um, and what do you yeah. think about the Dynamax in this case? Um, I think it's a bit preemptive. Um, switching, either trying to pick up the KO on the NDD first uh, before the Azumarill seems a little bit safer. Whereas just going straight at the uh, Azumarill can be easily countered by something such as just switching out turn one. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe the damage can snowball enough to where you can pick up KOs as fast, like fast enough to uh, to the point where it doesn't matter as much. And Sorry, I don't know what I was exactly trying no, to No, that was there. a super interesting turn of events. We see the G-Max drum solo do about 50% into that Porygon 2, and the Steel Roller come out from the Azumarill to go ahead and take that Ndidi down by, like, 75%. Um, incredibly powerful move, super useful in overriding that double-expanding force. Rollercoaster no longer has a two-hit KO onto that Azumarill from his Ndidi. So, uh, very good play, I think, from Eon Shadow. Yeah, and another thing that it allows is now the Ndidi can just be picked off by a quick Aqua Jet from this Azumarill if it stays in. Exactly. Um, so the the redirect it can't redirect the Rillaboom's attack at this point. Yeah, and the only way for Rollercoaster to get any kind of um, terrain back in play is to switch a real Rillaboom in and give a G Max Drum Soul even more damage enough, to presumably, to pick up the KO onto the Porygon mm -hmm. too. As we do see the Aqua Jet into the protecting Ndidi. And then I, we'll see the drum solo. Oh, we'll see Max Knuckle. Oh. oh, wow. 
Interesting. Uh, this is going to start to pile up with these attack boosts. Yeah, and that Porygon 2 is at very low health. It's going to be able to, you know, after it gets Trick Room up, it's going to be able to recover first, but that's a scary Rillaboom to be staring down. <laughs> it still has access to one... Oh, it goes for the recover, so it's not even going to... A G-Max Drum Solo knocks out that Porygon next turn. Yeah, and Aqua Jet G-Max Drum Solo is, like, super safe Yeah. Uh, from Eon Shadow's uh, side. Although it's going to be very interesting... Picking up two KOs here, yes, but your Dynamax being completely stalled out um, with your opponent not using their Dynamax whatsoever. So it'll be interesting to see if it's enough with just the two KOs on yeah. turn three or so. I, I agree. Uh, the, the only downside uh, right now, to I mean, despite the having your Dynamax stalled out, you're going to be coming out of Dynamax relatively healthy for that Rillaboom and with no option for Trick Room, uh, it's going to be the fastest thing on the field, barring mm -hmm. a speed tie against an opposing Rillaboom. Um, so it's going to be able to freely go for a knockout into Azumarill next turn, um, presumably with a Grassy Glide. Um, mm -hmm. And and it then we end up with uh, Eon Shadow having like a, a distinct Pokemon advantage, as well as having the exact same two. Um, Rob's uh, Azumarill has taken significantly more damage, than roller coasters, but uh, I don't think that it's gonna live a plus one grassy glide in grassy terrain. No, I, I do not believe so. Um, and in, there's an interesting um, kind of 50 50 here where like a fake out into real boom is possible to pick that off, and then no, nothing can KO the Azumarill. Mm -hmm. Whereas a grassy glide into the opposing Azumarill, as predicting the real boom to switch, or um, per, I guess it, I believe it's AB, so it cannot protect itself, yeah. but just predicting it to switch. Um, would give so much momentum to either player depending on how they get this 50-50 right. Yeah, I, I I would presume Rob probably does not want to switch out that Rillaboom given the fact that it, it is at uh, plus one attack and there's going to be no way of regaining that plus one attack. Um, but seeing what Rollercoaster has done I think is really interesting and it looks like uh, Rollercoaster has called correctly um, kind of called the bluff from uh, thinking that maybe the, the fake out would be going into the Azumarill. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think that Azumarill is pretty safe this turn. It's going to go ahead and live um, from Rollercoaster's side. And yeah. Um, I, I think an interesting thing here is, again, I believe he went for the Steel Spike again instead of the Max Starfall. So I'm not sure if that picks up the KO. Uh, it probably does at this point with seeing how much the fake out did. Yeah, in, into but. the fake out, I think it's going to be enough because did we see it on the Dynamax Rillaboom last last uh, Gigantamax I, Rillaboom? I believe so. Yeah, on the Gigantamax Rillaboom, it did like thirty five to forty percent ish. Yeah, and we see so. it is a critical hit in turn. Uh, unsure as to whether or not that mattered, it didn't look like it given the amount of damage that was taken from fake out, but. Um, we have both Pokemon. We can do that calculation later, if anyone's yeah. interested. Um, I do not think it mattered because of the fake out damage, but I cannot be 100% sure. Yeah. So now we see uh, the remainder. It's no longer a mirror. We've got back to 2v2 with Rollercoaster um, having his Dynamax, getting, having that full health Azumarill with uh, no priority moves to take it down. Um, short of Aqua Jet, which will not take it down, versus Robbie's um, Azumarill and Hatterene. So. As we see, the, uh, Robbie's Azumarill do pretty much nothing that turn, yeah. with the Aqua Jet doing about 12 damage. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, I would have necessarily gone for an Aqua Jet there. Perhaps trying to predict the double into Hatterene to deny Trick Room, you might go for like a... Um, a play rough to potentially get an attack drop onto that Rillaboom um, mm -hmm. might be a slightly better win condition. And I, I doubt that Hatterene is, is carrying Protect, so there's really nothing it could do um, yeah. other than click Trick Room and hope it somehow survives. And assuming that the, the Hatterene is Sash, which I believe I saw, mm -hmm. um, both players would know that both players have the Sash. Um, Hatterene. Mm -hmm. So knowing that, like a play rough is a lot safer from the Azumarill because you would need a double up to KO the Hatterene anyways. So like worst case scenario is that the Azumarill gets KO'd without doing anything, but even then you would get Trick Room up. Yeah. Well, bet like by going for Aqua Jet, you end up doing very little damage when you could have done a lot more. Yeah. And, issue. and I, I had I had miscounted. I we have the the number of Pokeballs covered. 
Uh, it looks like uh, Rob still had the Marowak in the back, so... Um, but presumably it's not going to be able to do a whole lot here. Now that Grassy Glide, and that's presumably what Rob was going for to um, try and predict last turn to avoid mm -hmm. going down and just trying to get some damage off before it went down. But yeah, um, yeah. given the fact that both players knew it was Focus Ash Hatterene, both players, you know, uh, the p optimal move from Rollercoaster was, was really to double into the Hatterene. Yeah. As we see, the Max guys are doing like 55% to protect the Axe. So. Yeah, and now it's in the rain. Um, and I think that's actually the end of Dynamax for Rollercoaster, if I'm not mistaken. So you can just go yeah. for an Aqua Jet. <laughs> it's um, a free Aqua Jet and knockoff this turn. Yeah, I, I don't even think that knockoff. We're going to see the knockoff uh, animation here. Um, so uh, a really interesting set with a mirror match. Um, not what I was expecting when I, I got the two teams a couple of hours apart. And when I went to go make the overlay, I was looking, and I was like, wait, this is the same six. And then I looked, and they were, in fact, the same rental code that they had screenshotted and sent to me. <laughs> um, That's pretty funny. Yeah, that is that is very funny. Um, we can, uh, after this battle is available, we can go ahead and post all of the rental codes. Um, we'll post them in our Discord um, under the rental codes. Uh, the one, the play, uh, this team right here, I know is, wasn't from anyone that I recognized, in terms of the name, uh, the game I that I believe it is it Angel Miranda that was the one that made this team. Um, if you give me one second, I can pull it up in my DMs. It was all I have is a single image, which is uh, very small. Uh, the name was Lento on the rental uh, or Tichi uh -oh. Tichi T I C C I. I I'm not sure. I, I believe he had a team very similar to this. I don't know if it was the same six exactly that he did well. Um, but I believe he was one of the players that was starting to use Life Orb Azumarill super early on. Yeah. Well, super so. interesting uh, mirror match up there. And uh, we'll go ahead and be posting all of these rental codes for, that everyone's using as long as uh, we get permission from everyone who built their own team. Um, but with that, I think we're going to take a one quick, one more quick break as we switch up uh, all of our inputs and we'll be back uh, with uh, Tiki will, or Chase will continue to host and uh, he'll have Rollercoast on to talk a little bit about the matchup before we watch Nibs's game. I was thinking, I was thinking oh, my oh my god, god I, can't I can't believe this, believe this just, just happened, happened again. Because <laughs> <laughs> I played Train a Mirror match last week and it happened again this week, so but uh, that, that was a really that's a weird mirror match. And like, I, I think you may have seen it like while I was playing, I had to check the speed tiers of things. Cause I was like, wait, mm -hmm. does this Rillaboom and had an Indeedee speed tie? So I got lucky on like some of the speed ties there. Oh, were they both min speed? Yeah, they're both min speed. Oh yeah. Okay, so there were some speed ties. Um, Austin, it looks like you are uh, echoing. Okay, Are we cool. Good? Apparently yeah. I'm not echoing anymore. Uh, so, before we get into this next match, I just want to shout out, that's my friend Robbie. We've been friends for years. He's a great guy. It was a lot of fun to play him, and I'm super glad that he, like, agreed to be a part of this. <laughs> yeah, and he's in chat right now saying that he was checking all the speeds <laughs> yeah. uh, with everything being zero IP min speed with all the speed ties. 